Hi everybody. I wanted to come to you today to talk to you a little bit about sanctuary and how that's something important for us to have even in this time of COVID. With um, our fellowship closed, for those of us who go there, and other churches and meditation places closed, um, we've lost some space that many of us call sanctuary. In fact, the big room where we hold our services at the fellowship. We call that a sanctuary. Now, having a place of sanctuary is really important. And it's really important because sanctuary is a place that restores you and it replenishes you, it nourishes you. In this renewal, you're reminded once again of what's really important. It's really important to you, for you. It's a place where you feel you no longer need to battle as if your identity depended on remaining strong. It's a place where you let every little bit of life wholeheartedly, whether that is grief or sadness or bewilderment or gratitude or joy, come forward. It's a place where you can leave behind anything that's toxic to your spirit. It's a place where you're thoroughly grounded, connected to this location and this time. It's a place where your soul can catch up with your body. Now we find many places uh, as sanctuary. Uh, certainly the fellowship, for those of us who attend there, uh, is a sanctuary to us. Gardens, uh, walking in the woods, retreat centers that we may go to, personal places that we have that have become important to us, those can all be sanctuaries to us. COVID-19 has put many of the places that we might consider to be sanctuary for ourselves out of our reach. So today I want to talk to you about creating sanctuary where you are and where you have access to. As with all spiritual practice, the first thing that needs to be in place in creating a sanctuary space is intention. That is, you have to name whatever space you are claiming for at that time as sanctuary. Now, it doesn't have to be a room with a fancy altar, though it can be. It can be as simple as your favorite chair on a porch or in the garden, or it could be in the bathroom, a drawn bath with candles and some lights and some music. It's not important where your sanctuary is. What's important is that there is an intention behind that place at that time for it to be sanctuary for you. You can spend a moment there or a couple of moments, or you can spend days on end there. It doesn't matter how much time you spend there. Again, what's important is the intention that you are creating some sanctuary space for your soul. Now I'm gonna post some links below uh, that will help you get started in ways about thinking about creating a sanctuary space and I'll put some notes there too. But I do want to talk about some basics. The basics are that the space that you create or use uh, needs to be used intentionally at that time even if it serves another purpose the rest of the time. Even if it's your study, even if it's your porch, even if it's your bathroom, your basement, uh, your favorite tire swing out in the yard. Uh, whatever it is, it needs to be intentional at that time. So that's important. You also might want to consider your five senses and the natural elements in kind of claiming your sanctuary space. So those would be sight, hearing, taste, touch, smell, and then the elements earth, air, fire, and water. You don't have to use them all. That's not important. But be intentional about using the ones that are important to you. So let's talk about what that looks like literally what that looks like. So visual sanctuary, right? There are plenty of ways to incorporate visuals into your sanctuary space. You can create an altar with an altar space with items that are important to you. You can put an altar cloth on it. You can have various things here. I've got something right here. Somebody gave me this uh, John Lennon prayer candle many years ago. Something like that. Um, stones or uh, little little icons that are important to you. Those are something you might put on an altar space. Candles, uh, definitely important. Uh, as you use, we often like chalices, and those are important. And I uh, wanted to show you some samples of what I have at home. 
so that you know how to create a chalice at home if you don't have one. Uh, one option, this is a simple footed dish that I bought at a thrift store probably for like $1.49. Um, there are tons of these at the thrift store, so you can go there and get something inexpensive like that to use. Um, I also made a chalice. These are kind of fun to do. Um, this one I made out of a flower pot, so it's simply the two pieces of the pot. This one's kind of big. You can buy these in all different sizes and even do a little mini one and use one of those tea lights. Um, yeah, so I just painted it, and then you flip this one upside down and you put the the uh, plate on top and then you put your candle on it voila chalice it's fun to make those with the kids but uh, I don't have kids in the house right now and I'm gonna say it's fun to make it for adults too so having chalice is good uh, that also can create other spaces as your sanctuary space when you think about it like laying a chalice at dinner time suddenly the dinner table can become a, a sacred kind of sanctuary space for you and whoever you're having a meal with so think about that other visuals you could use might include pictures um, of loved ones or places that you love, uh, mementos uh, that, that you carry with you that are important to you. Those are some things you can use for visuals. A great visual that's got the side effect of being aromatherapy is flowers, so there you're incorporating a sense of smell. You can also uh, highlight uh, scents in your sanctuary space with incense or aromatherapy oils. If I'm being honest, I think the smell of my dog gives me a moment of sanctuary whenever I kind of like nuzzle into her because something about the smell of her makes me feel safe and comforted. So that's another idea, like claiming those sanctuary moments when you have them too. Like just knowing that I feel that way and breathing that in and letting the feel of her warmth and the smell of her uh, kind of be a comfort and nourishment to, to what I'm needing that day. Sounds also are important sometimes in creating sanctuary space, so you can think about how you might want to do that. We live in a time and space of headphones, uh, which is great, uh, because even if you don't live out in the country where you can listen to bird songs and the rustling of trees, you can put some earbuds in and um, you know download some, some music or some sounds uh, that are relaxing to you. You could also make your own sounds, maybe drumming, humming, singing, chanting, praying out loud, whatever kinds of sounds are comforting to you. If you find sound comforting, that's something to consider in your sanctuary space as well. Some folks prefer to have silence and uh, that's okay too. Also think about touch and taste to enhance your sanctuary space. Um, so touch, often what comes to mind then is just feeling yourself like grounded wherever you are in your chair or how you're sitting, um, maybe your, your feet on the ground or your hands resting in your lap. Those are things that sometimes help people to feel, physically feel grounded in the space that they're in. The important thing here is you being comfortable. So sitting Zazen style, if that's not comfortable for you, don't do that. If you need to sit reclined in a recliner, do that. If you don't like to sit still at all, then maybe you might want to consider walking out in the woods or having a sanctuary space that's bigger and lets you move around. Uh, maybe doing yoga in your sanctuary space, but doing it in that embodied kind of way of connecting with everything, not just as exercise, but as a spiritual and soul nourishing kind of activity. Now, once you've created and named some sanctuary uh, time and space for yourself, you can use that place for all kinds of things. You can use it to meditate or pray. Um, also, I got some things here that help too. Prayer beads are a great thing. Uh, if you're into that, or you can use these for meditation just kind of to guide you along. Uh, maybe like the loving kindness meditation. These are great. I made these, uh, I think, at an activity at church one day. Um, again, stones or something to hang on to. This one's nice and kind of bubbly feeling, so it feels good, those texture things. Um, if you want to, what you do in that space, so you might just hold on to that rock or you might hold on to those beads. Maybe you're going to meditate. Maybe you're just going to be quiet. Maybe you'll do some reading and reflecting there. Maybe you'll do some more intentional yoga, right, or breathing meditation. Uh, writing is also something you can do there. 
you might just want to use it as listening space, listening to the sounds of the world around you, or listening to the sounds of your inner spirit and what you need. Right? We don't take a lot of time to do that as much as we should. I hope that you all have a space to call sanctuary in your lives. I'd love to see pictures of that or read descriptions about those spaces for you. You can send me an email or you can leave me a comment in the comments below if you're watching this on Facebook or YouTube. I want to thank you for spending a few moments with me today and I want to say how much I care for all of you and I really do hope that you are doing well and being safe in this time. Until we see each other again, be loving and be loved.